Hi, I'm Nolan Finley, and I'm here at the Mackinac Policy Conference with Major General Clark LeMasters and Lieutenant Governor Brian Kelly. And we're going to talk a little bit about defense industry and its impact on southeastern Michigan and Michigan as a whole. And Governor, you were um, part of this effort to put together a study of Michigan's defense segment, its opportunities and the warning signs ahead and what we need to do to grow it. I think the, the report is protect and grow, right? And That's right. It's, a, it's really a strategic plan for how mm -hmm. do we ensure that we that we maintain what we have, but then to, to really leverage it to grow in the future. One of the things that people are, are pretty surprised to learn is how big the defense industry in Michigan is. The, uh, the, we, we found that there are over 105,000 jobs that are defense related in our state today. In that, um, and, and by the way, the, the average wage is in the 70s uh, in terms of the, uh, the, the type of money that is made yeah, in this. Good jobs. Yeah, good jobs. And, uh, and, and then on top of that, about $9 billion in goods and services mm. that are produced here. So this is a really strong part of our economy today. And when you think about its connections to the other things that are happening in industry in Michigan, mm -hmm. that we know that it can be an even bigger part of our future. And Major General, when you take a look at Michigan, and you've been on the job now a month, uh, but when you take a look at Michigan, what are its strengths in terms of attracting defense dollars? The one is the automotive industry, mm -hmm. of course, and that traditional and historic relationship that started back during World War II uh, and, and, and leveraging my command, Tank Automotive and Armament Command, and the close synergy that it has with the automotive industry to share technology, share ideas, and then you know share on the capacity of the automotive industry to produce. Now, one of the areas you're, the Army is very much involved in, and that's mobility, and of course the automakers here want to make mo mobility and autonomous cars, uh, we, we want to make Michigan a center for that research and de development and not lose it to Silicon Valley. Right. Um, what are the synergies between the auto industry on that, on that issue? Well, if you were to think about the industry itself uh, in, in the, all the different aspects of, mm -hmm. uh, that, that we're working on today, both the, uh, the, the autonomous vehicles themselves, the IT systems that have to back that up, the reliability requirement and the cybersecurity that is required a, a, around it. Um, on top of that, aerodynamics and fuel efficiency right. and, and, uh, and light weighting and joining technologies between different types of metals. All these things are, are, uh, are uh, top of mind, front and center in the automotive industry, and they're all things that are very relatable or transferable to the needs of the defense industry, and that's why we think we're well positioned uh, to, to benefit from it. And the Army dollars, the, the defense dollars would go a long way in terms of cementing this region as the place to be if you want to innovate in the mobility segment, right? Certainly will help. So let me, let me ask you this, when you look at the challenges Michigan faces, uh, what did the report find, and, and uh, Major General, what do you look out and see the things um, Michigan needs to do? We'll start, start with you, Governor. Well, first of all, we can never take for granted w w what is here. I mean, the, the world is a very small place, and, uh, and so we have to work to keep what we have and in and, uh, and, and working in right. close concert with our with our uh, congressional delegation and and, um, and the different uh, agencies and and uh, and making sure that we're meeting the needs of our um, of, of the industry that we're hosting in this case with uh, when you take the Detroit Arsenal for example um, that everything from having the the, the engineering know-how and the IT right. professionals that are required to make this stuff happen that these you know these are the sorts of things that we just make us yeah. that much more attractive to maintain what we have. And Major Junior, you just came from Huntsville, Alabama, I where did. defense is, getting defense dollars has become sort of an art. They live on defense spending, probably more, much more so than we do here in Metro Detroit. What does Michigan need to do to compete with a Huntsville, uh, Alabama, or Rock Island, Illinois, or other places that have strong defense bases? Well, I think you took the first huge step a year or so ago when you started the plan that you rolled out today. Mm -hmm. Uh, I scanned through it briefly and, and listened to the, the interviews uh, and the rollout. That's the first step. You've got a vision, you've got a plan, and I think you've hit the mark in understanding what the state has, what the state's power has as it relates to the industry in the area. You've got great institutes of learning. 
great universities that, that you know, research uh, capital of the world, as, as I've heard several people talk about it. And uh, I think the state's well positioned now as it sees in itself and understands and if it fulfills the plan and educates, it's going to do very well, I believe. But from your perspective, looking at the state, what do we need to do better? Uh, I think it's just see, I think it's follow through with the plan. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no, I don't think there's a magic pill or anything you can say right now that's going to instantly attract. I mean, many of these industries are hardwired into certain parts of the world, just like the automotive industry is here. So there's not anything that's going to move instantly something to, the, to the, the Michigan area, but clearly you've highlighted you know, some of the advantages and I've listened to several of the sessions yesterday and today about what you know, the state government, the local governments are doing from a policy perspective, from a tax, from an economic perspective mm -hmm. to attract new businesses and grow businesses inside the state you know, with the capabilities that you have here, those new starts, those innovative young men and women coming out of your great universities, that's going to, is what's going to draw people to the area and help this. So, Lieutenant Governor, what are we going to do with this report now? Where does it go from here? Well, the, uh, taking the, the steps for, toward implementation, some of them are just the way that we operate. So when we talk about de business development, uh, the way that the incentives work and the economic gardening that we do, um, connecting people to contracting opportunities and helping them through that process is a, is a big part of it. And, and then, uh, so those are the things that just part of how we operate. But there's also things that we can do to improve the, uh, the physical sites and make us more attractive for new mm -hmm. missions in the future. Because, it, you know, as, as was mentioned, it's hard to get something to move from where it's at to right. someplace new. But there's growth opportunities, things change. And so when there's some new opportunity out there, we just want to make sure that number one, we've got the information with lead time and that we've got the wherewithal to, to actually uh, create the right environment for that new thing to happen here in Michigan. So our first step is actually asking the legislature for an appropriation, it happened to be $3 million that I think will make it through this process and to the governor's desk to, uh, to, to start the, uh, the beginning implementation of this report. But a lot of things you, you will need to do to attract defense dollars, you also need to do to, do to attract private dollars, right, to other sectors and other industries. That's, that's the beauty of, of the things that we need to do in order to be more attractive to mm -hmm. defense-related industries are the same things that we need to do to, uh, to take advantage of all the growth opportunities that exist with our existing industries. And so that's why the, these strategies are so closely aligned and why we feel very good about having them overlap is that okay. when we have these STEM uh, initiatives and trying to get more, uh, more kids to get interested in mathematics right. and engineering and, mm -hmm. and science and technology. Need, Major General, Absolutely. Right? So, Absolutely. Well, we want to thank Brian Kelly, Lieutenant Governor, and uh, Major General Clark LeMasters, welcome to Detroit. Thank we you. hope to see you again. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.